Yeah, man. Um, this is a story on when Biggie like stole the he stole the whole music buzz that was surrounding that was like basically you know Wu Tang's music buzz that they had already was building for themselves. Around the whole area of New York, Wu Tang was really, you know, a big deal in the year of 1995, and they was already like, you know, making a buzz for themselves before the the year of 1995. But when they was like really getting that whole, getting the whole New York, you know, surrounding like with the with their whole movement, they went on a tour in the year of 1995. And um, before they went on this tour, like, you know, they was just finna like go on it. Like they was getting the buses ready. And all the members like were saying they, um, uh, they were saying bye to their, you know, to their girls and kids or whatnot. Um, it was this reporter guy that no one really knew anything of. Um, he was there to ask questions, you know, for each one of the members about, you know, what they got upcoming and things like that. And one of the guys approached Reza, one, not one of the guys, but the, the reporter guy approached Reza and asked him a question about, um, about what he had going on for himself and things like that. But somewhere between the line of the um, of the question and the reporter was, you know, questioning RZA, asking what he had going on with the group and for himself, he twisted the whole storyline and kind of like basically was saying that Wu Tang, you know, he he, he turned it around and made it seem like uh, Wu Tang didn't like the South. And kind of made like they were like he was bad mouthing the South. And so when the Wu Tang went on tour, you know they had, you know, people throwing things at the bus. And things are like that, and it was really a big, whole chaos, uh, going on. They had to like you know run back to their tour bus after they perform, you, you know, because they didn't really have the proper security. So going through all of that and just being on, you know, tour for that month, Biggie was gaining a big momentum. Uh, but Wu-Tang and that whole lie that was twisted up with that reporter guy, they kind of had, you know, that the South not liking Wu-Tang. So that really hit Wu-Tang in a way. But while the whole time, while this was going on, Big was in the studio, knocking them out, getting them, knocking recording joints and just, you know, radio joints. And the radio joint that put Big on the map, really, in the year of 95, was One More Chance, the remix. So, with that song blowing up like the way it did, and just, just taking New York by storm, through the radio waves, when Wu Tang had got off of the month long tour that they was on, they come back and Ghostface, you know, was hearing people bumping big. Ghostface and um, Raekwon was hearing people bumping big. One more chance remix. And Ghostface heard his girl like playing it too. And he got kind of mad because it was like, you only supposed to be playing Wu Tang music. You don't be playing about his music. So, but she was like, you know, this is, this song right here has <laughs> been playing and they kept requesting it and she liked it. That pissed, man, that pissed Ghostface off. And it was like, man, what happened within a month? What would actually, how could we lose this music buzz, this momentum that we had for a month, month just being gone for a month? 
That's how big this song was. Just a one more chance song, period. But the remix, oh my goodness. The one more chance remix really took it out by storm and really stole the whole music buzz that Wu Tang had going on for themselves. Now, the remix of the song, which was originally released as part of Biggie's first album, Ready to Die, the remix itself came out through Bad Boy Entertainment and Artista Records on July 6th of 1995. Now, the track was produced by Puff and another artist called Tumbling Dice. And they co-wrote the song alongside Big, Bunny DeBarge, and Mark DeBarge. And the later two co-writers acknowledged, due to the fact that the instrumental to One More Chance and Stay With Me remix, it relies heavily on the song called Stay With Me. And it was said that the track was released in 1983 by the family group The DeBarge, which Bunny and Mark were part of. Now, originally, when you know creating the remix, Tumbling Dice, you know, who also known as Rashad Smith, wanted to sample a song called "Riding High" by Fazo, and uh, which came out like in 1977. He says that you know Puff was cool with the idea, but Dice decided to go with "Stay with Me" instead. Now, at this time, now mind you, that this track was released, Biggie was actually married to you know to the featured artist, you know, at the time being Faith Evans. The song was a major historical hit for Big. It debuted on August in the Billboard Hot 100 at the fifth overall position. And up, to, up until that point, it was the highest rap song that had ever premiered on that chart. And it also peaked at number two in addition to topping Billboard's hot R&B, hip-hop songs, and hot rap songs, listings, and, and ultimately being you know, certified, going certified platinum in the U.S. Now, this is me just breaking down the whole reason why One More Chance just took everything by storm and just, you know, pushed Wu-Tang out the way with their music buzz and what they had, everything going on, you know, before that point. Now, back to, you know, you know, the One More Chance, that whole story behind that. You know, it charted in a handful of other co countries as well, including, you know, it, it breaking the top 40 of the UK singles chart. Now, there have been numerous remixes of One More Chance, you know, at, at this time, around the, you know, time period, as well as the original itself. But it was this particular version you know, upon which the original music video was created, said that Hype Williams, the clip that Hype said that Hype Williams uh, was the most renowned hip hop music video creators of that era. As a director, it featured a plethora of stars, man, uh, that was somewhat, you know, a part of the bad boy camp, such as Craig Mack, Total, Puff himself, and, as well as, you know, Big's Junior Mafia Squad. But there was also, you know, a few others that was a part of this music video. Mary J. Blige, Zanae, Spike Lee, Jermaine Dupree, the, Bat, the Brat, Queen Latifah, and, and so on. So it, it just shows you that um, the power that, you know, that song had within itself and, and how much it gravitated to the whole, to the state of New York itself. And... I don't want to say it just crumbled Wu Tang, but it kind of like you know, it kind of it kind of made kind of motivated them them to want to you know get back to get back in that studio and make more hits because it it can only be just a, a short quick span of a month and somebody else can get your spot. That was just the power of the notorious B.I.G. Man. It was the power that um that of the people that was, you know, that, that bagged him, that, that was behind him, the fans, you know, that supported Big. It just showed you how big and how strong his fan base was at that time. You know, Big came out like in, you know, 91, 92. 
So, you know, with that song being, you know, taken over like the way it did, it kind of put, you know, Wu-Tang, you know, on the back burner, like as far as like, you know, music and hip hop, because people got to understand these radio joints. I mean, Wu-Tang had hits, but Wu-Tang had a lot of hardcore songs and not, you know, many radio joints. They didn't really have any radio joints like Big did. Big had radio joints. And the only reason why Big had radio joints the way he did because Puff had to tell him, like, hey, man, people can make fun of these radio joints all they want to, but we going to be laughing to the bank. What they going to be laughing to? You know what I'm saying? They can make fun of that all they want to, but this is what, this is the way. This is what people, this is how your music is really going to get heard. And, and and this is the and this is one of the ways that people want to like you know they hear these radio joints they're gonna want to see what else it is on your album and they're gonna want to listen to that because of the stuff that they hear the songs that they hear on the radio because this is what this is what's doing it this is what's gonna introduce you to the world radio joints introduces the artist to the world and have them wanting to look to hear more from that artist other songs whether it be in those hardcore songs. But you have to have the radio joints to get you to introduce yourself to the people so they can want to hear more from you and what else that you have in store. So that's what Puff told, you know, Big. Big didn't want to hear that because Big had nothing but hardcore music that he wanted to put out because he was just like Wu-Tang. Just want to just put out hardcore, you know, hip-hop music and, you know, street shit. Big one trying to do no radio joints. Puff had to get them into that mindset of, of of introducing them to, you know, having them so, them slow them. I want to say soft songs, but slower songs that he can rap to, that that people that, that you can sample, you know, from other legendary artists before time, like R&B joints, like Juicy, for example. Flip that, turn it into a hip hop joint. That's gonna go into a radio joint. See, Puff was a genius when it came to, you know, the sampling and you know, turning R&B songs to hip-hop songs. And that's what he did for Big. And them radio joints took Big onto a whole other level and got him, like, mainstream for the work and recognized who the notorious B.I.G. was. But this also helped motivate Wu-Tang to want to get back in that studio and and to um get back their respect that they feel like, you know, that they deserve. Cause Wu Tang is legendary as well. It's just that when you got that, when you had that power, like within the music that Big had, you know, it kind of like, what can you do, right? Especially competing with radio joints, and that kind of like something that Wu Tang had to, you know, take in mind and realize, like, okay, we gotta go back to the drawing board. We gotta. We gotta get we gotta get things back right the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> but yeah, man, I just wanted to break that down to you since a reality TV. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. That's the story. Um, you know, when Big, you know, took that music buzz away from Wu Tang when Wu Tang was gone for that month on that tour. You know, so yeah, y'all be good, be easy, and um Live, love, laugh, stay military mind to keep God first. So whoever that y'all believe in, well, nah, keep God first. We'll just keep it like that. But um, I'll holler at y'all later, man. And, um, yeah, one love, peace to all, sincere reality TV, and I'm gone.